welcome to Dog Paw Blog. I got a request to do um, kind of a walkthrough on how to fly with a pet in cabin. So that's what this video is going to be about. If you've never flown with a pet in cabin and you're planning to, it can be a little nerve wracking because you just don't know what to expect. Like you don't know what to expect for like trying to book the ticket and what carrier to use and what the dog is going to do on the flight and getting around the airport. So I'm going to do a video on my experience um, that I've flown with Coco in cabin and kind of walk you through it. Believe me, it's not a huge deal. I know like your first trip you're going to be nervous and it's kind of like, what do you expect? But we're going to walk through everything together. And if you have any questions, you know what to do. Leave them down below. I'll do my best to get back to you. This video is going to be covering U.S. domestic flights only. And that's only going to be the 48 states, so not including Alaska or Hawaii because they have special regulations and quarantine um, that I'm not familiar with. And also, this is pretty much going to be dealing with Southwest Airlines. You can generalize it to other airlines and check the specifics for those um, rules and regulations with flying with somebody else besides Southwest. But I flew Southwest. I really recommend them too because they have the cheapest flights, they have the two free check bags, and they have the cheapest pet fee. So currently, Southwest, their pet fee is $95. Um, and that's each way that's coming and going. Southwest also does not ship animals as cargo. So this video is gonna solely, strictly be about flying with an in-cabin pet, meaning that your dog is small enough to go in a carrier that fits underneath of the seat in front of you. And I'm gonna be showing you some carriers that I've used, as well as some other like little accessories and stuff. So here we go, we're just gonna break this down. I'm gonna include everything in the description bar for you guys. So the first thing you need to think about is prep work, right? The pre-planning part of the trip. So ideally you've already figured out where you're going and then if you're doing like a pet friendly rental, where you're going is pretty pet friendly if you're taking your dog, right? So now you just need to book your flight. So what I recommend, and again this is specifically for Southwest because Southwest is one of the few airlines that does not guarantee your pet reservation. So I'm gonna walk through that. You would um, pick the flight that you need online, like know what that is know your flight number, call the reservation number, and ask them, I'm thinking about booking this flight, I just wanna verify you already haven't exceeded your allotment for pets and cabin. Because most is between like four and six. Most airlines are four to six for their limit of in-cabin pets. Now, service dogs and emotional support animals do not count towards that number. So once you've talked to someone, they say, oh no, you're okay, we only have like one or two people that have a um, reservation for their pet book your flight, call back and tell them, okay, this is my flight information, this is the flight, I'm bringing my pet. And they'll make a notation under your, your reservation that you're bringing a pet. Here's the catch with that, with Southwest not guaranteeing your pet reservation. Really with Southwest, it's first come, first serve. So it's when you check in. So if you've already got your dog and you're on your way, but you're late, and six people have already checked in with their pets before you, you can be denied boarding. Well, your pet can be denied boarding. So what they recommend is that you get there three hours early. So typically, if you're flying, you get there like two hours before departure. That gives you time to go to security and find your gate and get settled and not be late. When you're flying with a pet, it's three hours. That gives you time to make sure you've checked in really early so you're not out of luck when it's time to board with your pet. And we're gonna talk about what you're gonna be doing during those three hours waiting around in the airport. So you're, you're gonna be glad you got there early. One, so you make sure that your pet can get on the plane and also that you've got time to do stuff that you need to do with your dog before you get on the plane. So that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go online, figure out the flight, call, ask if they already have met their limit. If not, book the flight, call back, make the pet reservation. Oh, and I talked about the pet fee. It's $95 at this time, both ways, like one way each, $95 for the pet fee. Think about once you're um, needing to get to the airport and once you get to the, your destination, are you gonna be using taxis? Are you gonna be using rental cars? A lot of taxis don't allow dogs, like or you have to have them in a carrier. Um, some rental car places are funny about that. So just when you're booking the rental car and you're thinking about how you're going to get around, think about the pet policy for the rental company. Um, if they're okay with you bringing the dog, I would just recommend bringing a sheet with you, like pack a sheet and cover 
the back seat so the pet doesn't leave hair everywhere. Um, a really good idea is to know the airline pet policy. There are certain rules. There are certain airlines that ship pets as cargo. There are certain um, airlines that do in cabin. There are certain airlines that won't fly certain breeds that are like brachiocephalic, so Shih Tzus and English Bulldogs, Pugs, they won't fly those dogs during certain temperatures. There are certain airlines that won't fly um, dogs as cargo at like peak summer times when it's really hot. Know the airline's pet policy that you're using. That also includes the carrier requirements, which I'm going to get into, but know very well the pet policy and print it out and bring it with you. Because if you ever run into an issue, you want to be able to know here's your website's information. Like this is this is what your your rules are, and also get the customer service number too. Like if there's a problem, a lot of the airlines will have a customer service line that you can call for help. So now, um, considering things that you need to do beforehand, you need to be thinking about your vet appointment because currently Southwest does not require a health certificate, but I say get one anyway. because you never know if something's gonna to happen to your flight and you need to reschedule or rebook with another airline like last minute, like you're traveling and something happens and you need to be rerouted, get a health certificate anyway. They're not that expensive. Now for other airlines, it can't be more than 10 days old. 10 days, yeah, 10 days old from your departure date. Don't worry about your um, coming back flight. It's your original flight out. They'll do an overall health check, probably do like a fecal sample test. And at that point, you wanna make sure they're up to date on all vaccines, get a rabies certificate. And at this time, if your pet's not microchipped, get the microchip. Also, at the vet appointment, I recommend talking to your vet about sedation. So there's two schools of thought with sedating a pet on a flight. That it's not good for them because they can't really regulate their breathing, they can't pop their ears, it can make them disoriented and they can get scared and that can freak them out even more. That's a possibility. The other school of thought is sedate them so they can sleep the whole time so you're not worried about them barking or having to go to the bathroom. So talk to your vet and they can give you the best advice and the best medication for your dog. There's um, traditional medications like Ace Promazine and Benadryl and Gabapentin and there are more natural solutions as well. There's Adaptyl, which is a pheromone, and there is um, lavender. So there are other options. You can do melatonin. So just have that conversation with your doctor so you're prepared to use sedation if you need it. So let's talk about carriers, right? I think this was my biggest thing with, was getting a carrier that would be airline approved. So the airline regulations are so ridiculous. There's no carrier that fits a medium size to normal size small dog that fits the, the dimensions listed on the airline website. Most soft-sided carriers, um, they'll fit, they'll smush to fit underneath the seat if you're using a soft-sided carrier. So don't worry so much about like the height on the airline dimensions. Let's say that the airline says the height of the carrier can't be more than eight inches, right? Find me a dog that's eight inches tall, that's not like a teacup, baby, puppy, chihuahua. You can pretty much get away with a carrier that's 12 inches tall, because it will, if it's soft-sided, it will fit underneath the seat. In a general sense, the requirements for airline carriers are that they need to be leak-proof and that they need to have three areas of ventilation so the pet can breathe underneath the seat, right? <laughs> like you don't want the only area of ventilation to be the top and then that's covered by the seat that they're underneath. You want like at least three areas of airflow for um, the pet. I will say three brands that I have heard have had the most success rate for being approved on the plane is a Sherpa, Sleepy Pod, and Sturdy Bag. Um, I've done a review on the Sturdy Bag Large, which exceeds in measurement the airline requirements, but it fit fine underneath the seat, so I'll leave a review for that. Okay, so this is one option for airline approved carrier. It is by Bergen. So you'll see that it does have three points of ventilation. That's because once this side is covered up with the chair that it's going to be underneath of, the pet still has, you know, space for air to pass through. 
What I like about this carrier is that on the zipper here, there's a way to secure it so they clip together so the pet can't get the zipper open. And there is some external um, storage. I'm gonna do a full review on this carrier though, but just to show you that it does flex to fit underneath of the seat. It does not leave your pet very much room, but if they're laying down and they're small, it's not so bad. But that's how this fits underneath of the airplane seat. It folds down like that. Now, it does have a, like a little pad in there that Velcros down. And this is lined, which is technically supposed to be leak proof. I always just throw, um, would recommend throwing a puppy pad underneath there as well, just to ensure that it's leak proof. So I'm gonna show you another option. This one, I love this one, is um, Argo by Tiefco or Tiefco by Argo. It's made out of neoprene, so it's very lightweight. And it as well has three points of ventilation. That side, the top, and this side here. Again, I'm gonna do a review on this bag as well. You do get a lot of external storage for this one. You do not get the zippers that um, lock in place. That's just a little, little pad that I put in there. But this does have a leak proof bottom. Very durable. <laughs> leak proof bottom there comes out. And you do get a tether as well. This bag looks like it's not see-through, but when I do the review for this, you're gonna see that from the animal's perspective, they can see out of this pretty well. So that's another option for you. Airline approved. And now for the sturdy bag. This is one of the three brands that I mentioned earlier that has the highest rate of approval for in-cabin pets. So this is the sturdy bag large, and it exceeds the measurements of most airlines in-cabin carrier, but it does flex down to fit. I have a review of this bag already, so if you want to check that out, I will leave a card for it. But it does have three points of ventilation. There's the front, the top, and the back. Three points of ventilation. Uh, most of these bags have a comfort spot where you can stick your hand in and pet the dog. All three of them do. When I do the review, I will show you, and you can see this one now. So those are the carriers and they are, of course, airline approved. Getting your dog used to the carrier. I would say take the carrier out a month before the flight. Leave it out on the floor open all the time. Feed them next to it, put their favorite toy in it, put like a, a bully stick, their favorite treat, a Kong, something in it so they associate that carrier as nothing frightening, nothing's happening, and it's all good stuff is happening. I also recommend taking the dog and the carrier in the car and putting the um, carrier on the floor and driving around like that because that sensation of the, the car vibration and the sound mimics the engine and the feel of being on a plane. And they'll be used to being on the floor in the carrier while something's moving. Another option is that on YouTube there are playlists that have airplane sounds have the dog be in the carrier and play those sounds as well and get them used to it. And you wanna make everything positive. Like don't do it for a really long time. Don't do it if the dog is freaking out. Start with really short amounts of time and then you can extend those as you go on. That's why you're doing this like a month ahead of time because it gives the dog time to get used to it. So don't keep them in there for the first time for like three hours and they hate it and never wanna get back in it. Do it for like 10 seconds, do it for 30 seconds, do it for a minute, do it for five minutes, do it for 10 minutes and just keep building and make it exciting and fun and then make a big deal about it that they're doing so good. One tip that I was told as far as like if you're gonna have a problem with the carrier when you, when you get to check in, they're always oh, too big. Those three brands are so popular. There are so many pictures of dogs in them on the plane. Find a couple of those and print those off and bring them with you because they're like, oh no, it's not gonna fit, it's too big. Be like, no, this is this carrier underneath the seat of an airline. I did that with Coco's 30 bag. I didn't have to show it, but it was good to have. Um, so they can see, okay, it does fit underneath the seat. I recommend getting a luggage tag um, that has like your information on it. 
you know, email, cell phone, <laughs> where you're going to be like in the airport or something if something happens, and putting that on the luggage tag, as well as carrying recent photos of your pet as well. Like, keep that on. And I'll show you the one that I use. I have a name badge, and on one side it's just Coco's picture, and then on the other side it's the flight itinerary and my contact information. So I recommend putting that on there. The flight. What is your pet going to be doing on the flight for five hours, right? Or in the gate area because you figure if you got there three hours early and you're going to be on the flight for however long and they're going to need stuff to do i recommend getting toys that they don't play with the more new to the dog they are the more interesting they're going to be um pick toys that do not have squeakers in them because you don't want your dog to be squeaking away <laughs> on this toy and disturbing the other passengers and also chews, some kind of chew that will not smell. Yeah, I feel like the cow ears don't smell and they don't get too messy. Um, if your dog likes antlers, use the antlers. You want something that's not gonna be smelly on the plane. I also recommend in the carrier, when you get ready to pack it to go for the flight, that you keep a day's worth of food. That way if something happens and you're stuck somewhere, you have food for the dog for at least a day till you can get to a pet store. Um, you want to keep a roll of poop bags and you want to keep their regular leash and collar in the carrier like not on them we're going to talk about a different harness and collar leash combination to use that's TSA friendly but you want to keep their regular stuff in the carrier so you have access to it you don't want to pack it and it be checked and then your luggage gets lost and then also a blanket and then a dry fur pad, which I'll show. It's an absorbent pad that you put at the bottom to make it leak proof. They come in different sizes for different carriers. Uh, they go at the bottom of your carrier and fold up like a little boat to catch any moisture. They always come two to a pack, so you have one for your flight both ways. So that's a really good option. And then a blanket. Um, what you want to do with the blanket is because it can get pretty cold on a plane and so you want the dog to have something to get warm in like to, to burrow under to get warm and also if you sleep with the blanket like the night before it'll smell like you and that should calm them down also for the blanket if you're using the natural pheromones you can spray those that melatonin that lavender those calming sprays, you can spray those on the blanket and it should calm the dog down. The other thing I wanna talk about is the fast pass harness and leash. So like I said, keep their regular leash with all their tags and all that stuff on it in the carrier. When you go to the airport, you're gonna be using the fast pass harness and leash. And what that is, I've talked about it before in videos because it's amazing. It's a collar or harness and a leash that have no metal in them. This is great because at one point, you're gonna have to take your dog out of the carrier to go through the TSA checkpoint. But you want to maintain control of your dog or cat or whatever in the airport. You don't want them to get away from you. And you don't wanna to have to take off the harness and the leash to go through the metal detector part. And then when they swab your hands, which I'm gonna talk about, you don't wanna to have to you know, lose control of them when your you know, hands are being swabbed. Know the pet relief areas. Know at least where it is if it's gonna be on the uh, land side, if it's gonna be on the airport side, because let's say you get to the airport and then you're gonna take your dog to the potty. If it's on land side, you have to go back through security. So you wanna make sure you have enough time. So that's why getting there three hours early is really good because it gives you time. If you need to go back through security, you have it. There are some airports that have airport side, which means it's past security which means you can just use, the dog can use the bathroom indoors, and there's like a, it's fake grass, it's turf, and it's gross, but if you're in a pinch, there's that option. Another option, if your dog, they're puppy pad trained, you can take a puppy pad to the bathroom, and they can go on that. So know where the pet relief areas are, and you can find that on any airline website. So now we're gonna talk about the day of travel, getting to the airport. So before you leave, I recommend exercising your dog, taking your dog for a pretty vigorous walk to tire them out because a tired dog will likely sleep, hopefully for the whole flight. Clip their nails before the flight because they can claw through that mesh. A lot of the, um, the carriers are just like the mesh and the dogs can get in there and tear them up. So cut your dog's nails.
then you need to think about um, how you're going to get to the airport. If you're um, driving out to the airport, you're going to be probably parking long-term parking and then catching the shuttle to the terminal. For pets, they have to stay in the carrier for the shuttle, so just be mindful of that, that they're going to be in the carrier for that, and that you're going to be carrying the dog and your luggage and <laughs> all your stuff. So kind of think about when you're packing, try to pack a little light because you're going to have to carry so much. You're taking a taxi, I think the same thing, just make sure that you can actually bring your dog there, bring them in the taxi. And then um, some airports offer a van, like a shuttle service from your home to the airport. Check and make sure that's pet friendly, that you can bring your dog. So I feel like typically you can, just they have to be in the carrier. So now you're at the airport, right? You're at the terminal. The thing with um, flying with an in-cabin pet, you have to check in with a human being that works there. You can't use the check-in kiosk because at this point when you're checking in, they're gonna ask, you know, for your pet fee. They're gonna, you're gonna pay at that time. They also may ask for your health certificate and to see the carrier, to see how big it is, to see if the pet fits in it correctly. So that's why you need to check in with a human being. After you pay your pet fee, Keep the receipt readily accessible because you may be asked to show it again. Once you get in the gate area, once you're about to board, they may ask to see the receipt again. And you don't want to have to be fumbling for it and you don't want to have like have lost it. You want to be able to show them, I've paid for this pet to, to board the plane. Now, the big thing. This is the thing I think I was most nervous about, the carrier and then security. So here in America, we have a pretty intense TSA security checkpoint where you have to take off your shoes, you have to take off your jacket, belt, keys, take your laptop out and put them in little bins and then walk through a full body scanner. Like that's typically what you do. Um, some airlines offer pre-screen where you don't have to do any of that and you just go because you've already cleared whatever kind of whatever they do for pre-screen. Southwest is one that offers that. I don't know if it's additional, I don't remember but you can select it and they put you on the pre-screen list and you just go right through. So let's talk about the traditional way because that may be what you have to do. Walk up to the first TSA person who looks at your boarding pass and asks for your ID and they, like, they check some stuff off, they mark on it and they give it back to you. At that point, when they notice you've got the pet then, they tell you to go a certain place. You have to take all your stuff off and put it in bins. You have to take the dog out of the carrier and put the carrier on the conveyor belt and send it through. This is where that TSA fast pass thing is gonna come in handy because you need to maintain control of your dog. And then that person tells you to come through the metal detector instead of the full body scanner. You just walk through with the metal detector. At that point, the person is probably gonna say, take off the collar and leash. Just let them know if you have the fast pass leash and harness that if there's no metal, it's for T TSA security checkpoint, it won't set the alarm off, blah, blah, let them know, and then go through. At that point, once you've gone through, they're gonna tell you to wait. If you get a nice TSA agent, they will ask where, where your stuff is. Like they'll say, is this your stuff? And they will get a bin, they'll, and they'll put all your stuff together and carry it for you off to the side. So no one steals your stuff. If it's busy <laughs> and they don't have time to do all that, you're gonna kind of be waiting off to the side till someone can come up and get you. So hopefully you're traveling with someone um, and they can watch your stuff because you're not allowed to get your stuff until you get your hands swabbed if you have to stand there. So ideally you're traveling with someone and they can watch your things. So then someone will come up and they just, they swab one hand and then they let you switch your pet over to the other arm and then they swab the other hand for explosives. Once you're clear, get your stuff and you're gonna be trying to find your gate area that's it that's it's really that easy you just you take your stuff off like you would normally do unless you're doing pre-screen you walk through the metal detector with your dog you wait there till someone comes and gets you to swab your hands and then you go to your gate area a lot of airports are the rule is that you have to keep your dog in the carrier even in the airport some airports are pet friendly so just look on the website where, where you're coming out of and then see if what their rule is for pets if they have to stay in a carrier in the airport. Find your gate area, go to the um, the check-in desk there and just like, you know, hey, I'm flying with my pet. So they, they can mark you as check-in specifically flying with a pet and you are one of the six 
they got there early enough so you don't get bumped. And then they're probably gonna ask to see your receipt, so show them the receipt. When you go to the desk, you can ask, I'm not saying they're gonna let you, but you can ask if you qualify for pre-boarding. Because you're traveling with a pet, you might need extra time to get the carrier to fit and to get the dog stuff out that you need for the flight. Just ask them. The worst they're gonna say is no, you don't qualify. But always ask, like, hey, I'm traveling with this pet. It takes a little bit more time to get settled. Do I qualify for pre-boarding? Then you're just kind of waiting. It's this three hours <laughs> because you were so good and got there early. You've got three hours to kill. You're gonna use those three hours to take your dog to the bathroom. Anybody who's ever flown Southwest knows they don't have assigned seating. Like you don't book your ticket and pick your chair, pick your seat when you book your flight. But what they do offer is early bird check-in and it costs a little bit more, it's not too much. And the earlier you check in before your flight, up to 24 hours, that puts you in the order that you're gonna pre-board, that you're gonna board. Um, so the sooner you can get checked in, the earlier group you're gonna be in. So that's good because then you can pick a seat that's convenient. And I'm gonna talk about where I think the best place is for you to sit with your dog on the flight. Um, now if you're doing any other airline, you're gonna pick your seat beforehand. And this is where I think the best place. If you've never flown with your dog and you do not know how they're gonna behave on the flight and you're worried about them barking or whining, I recommend sitting by the back bathroom where the flight attendants make the food and the drinks. Because one, <laughs> there's a lot of noise with the flight attendants getting everything ready. There's a lot of noise from just like the bathroom, people going in and out and passing back and forth. And also, the back bathroom is often where the families with little children and babies sit because they're trying to be close to the bathroom. And for some reason, on like every flight I've gone to, that's where all the families are. The kids will hopefully be making more noise than your dog is. And the people who are traveling with babies are already like just so distracted with the baby and are hopefully going to be sympathetic if your dog whines because their baby's probably going to cry so they shouldn't feel too judgmental so if your dog is whining because their baby's crying so that's where I recommend when I first was going to fly I thought the best place to sit would be over the engine because the engine is really loud and that would drown her out for making noises but no because eventually you get habituated to the noise of the engine and so people still hear your dog because the engine kind of fades to the background. You don't notice it as much and people can hear your dog sporadically barking. Also, the engine might upset the dog more and cause them to be more vocal. Like So like now they've called everyone like to start to line up. 30 minutes before your departure time. So typically that's when, like once they start calling groups, that's when I would um, do the sedation. So if you've chosen, you've had the conversation with your vet and they've recommended some whatever sedation, whether it be traditional medication or it's a natural whatever, 30 minutes before your departure time, give your dog the sedative. Or unless you have specific, because certain medications you may need to give earlier before the dog gets too wound up. So whatever the recommendation is for your from your doctor, give the medication while you're in the gate area. So it'll start to take effect and last hopefully for the flight. Now you're you're boarding the plane. So you know how you have to take your stuff and put it in the overhead bin and get your seat and the person that's in front of you is holding up the line? <laughs> Don't be that person. Try your best, get into your seat, you know, put your stuff up, get into your seat and then fiddle with getting the carrier in. Don't hold the line up trying to get the dog in and get your stuff and get situated. The dog counts as your carry-on and so you can still have a personal item. Once everyone's seated, go back and get stuff out of your, your personal item. Or if your personal item is small enough to fit underneath there too. This is going to be, you know, where you're using those, um, those non-squeaky toys and those shoes that don't have any scent to them. That's when you're going to be using those. I like to give ice throughout the flight. It's not her gulping down fluid, which is going to make her have to go to the bathroom, but it keeps her hydrated and keeps her cool, like chewing on the ice. So ask the flight attendant when they come around, ask for a cup of ice and give that. You can comfort your dog during the flight. Like you can put your hand in the carrier and tell them it's okay and you can pet them, but you are not allowed to take them out. You are not allowed to have them be half in the bag, half out the bag. And the carrier has to stay on the floor and it has to stay underneath of the seat in front of you. 
for the for the takeoff, the flight, and taxiing to the gate to land. Like, so now you're, you've made it through your flight, your dog has been well behaved, hopefully there's been no incident. Once the plane lands, you know how everyone jumps up all at once, like they're all going to be able to get out of the plane at the same time? Why? Why do people do that? You know, once the plane lands, you still have like five minutes of waiting for them to open the door. Just like you didn't want to be in the way when people were trying to board, you don't want to be in the way trying to get your dog and get all your stuff when people are trying to get off. I like to be the last person off just because it gives me time to make sure I have everything. I can pull her carrier out from underneath the seat and take my time and not feel like I'm in everyone's way. Because even then, you still know you still have to wait for your bags to come from baggage claim. So why are you in a rush? Why are people, the minute the plane lands, everyone stands up. <laughs> so it's like, you know you can't go anywhere yet. Make sure you have everything, get your dog. At this point, make your way towards baggage claim and let your dog go to the bathroom. Because that at that point, once you're at baggage claim, you're back on the non-secure side and there's just doors. So you can just take your dog right outside and use the potty area. Oftentimes there'll be a pet relief area outside of baggage claim. Give your dog a chance to stretch their legs. They have been in the carrier for hours. The trip to the airport, they were in the carrier. The gate area, they were in the carrier. The whole plane ride. Give them time to stretch. You're still waiting for your bag. It hasn't even come off yet. It's just, just take your dog outside to go to the bathroom. Put them back in the carrier and then wait for your bag. Oh, get a cart at that point. When you come back in and put them in the carrier, get one of those those carts to put your stuff on. It'll be easier. Um, it's at that point where you'll probably get your rental car or you'll take a taxi to wherever you're going. So they'll be in the carrier for that as well. And then have fun. So yeah, that's it. Just, you've made it. So now on your return flight, you'll already know what to expect in any subsequent flights. You've got this. See, it wasn't that bad, right? There's a lot of prep work for you to do in the beginning. But once you get the ball rolling, once you're going, the airport staff, the they know what they're doing. They do this day in, day out. Nothing is new to them. If you have any questions, if you need help, ask someone who works for the airport. Their job is to get you on the plane and to where you gotta go. I hope this was helpful. Again, I wanted to make this pretty thorough. I wanted to walk through every single step with you guys because I know when I was first flying with her, I was so nervous. I was I didn't know what to expect. So I'm gonna include links to Southwest Policy, to Dog Jaunt, to her book, and then also where I get a lot of um, the supplies for flying with her in cabin. So if you have any questions, certainly leave them down below. I get I do my best to get back to everyone. If you've flown with your dog in cabin. Let me know, let me know how your experience was. Was there anything that you found that was different flying with a different airline? So I hope this video was helpful and thank you guys always for watching.